10 o'clock. Uh, the call is Wednesday, July 12, 2023. Board of Equalization meeting for order. The first item is roll call, Mr. Brett Town. Present. Miss Eleanor Thompson. Present. And I'm Patrick Crawl, and I'm here. Notice of the meeting was properly posted. First item is discussion and possible action regarding approval of the minutes of June 16th. June 20th and June 26th. Motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the minutes of June 16th, 20, and 26th of 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is the first property, uh, POE number 175, and this all will be by phone. Um, I know this first guy is going to be. I guess we'll call the other folks. Okay. Um, since they are not here, so this is going to be Christopher Gladwell, um, or at least that's who we need to be speaking to. Okay. Hello, you've reached Courtney Simmons at Pivotal Tax Solutions. I'm either on the phone or away from my desk. Please leave your name, number, and a detailed message, and I'll return your call as soon as possible. If you need an immediate assistance, please call Shauna Smith at four eight zero. 615-3375 or call our main line at 480-634-6169. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, this is Patrick Crawley, Chairman of the Board of Equalization in Oklahoma County. We have a property that uh, is on the agenda that someone in your office is supposed to be uh, available for. We will call, we'll make one call back and try one of these numbers that you just gave. Uh, and that's it. Did you get any of those numbers? Uh, I got the main line. Let me check my email. I'll see if what, they... What number did you call? Uh, so we called the one that was on the form itself. 634-6169? Correct, yep. Although the lady that answered wasn't Christopher Gladwell. Let's see if... Uh, they gave us a best number. Okay, yeah, let's try the main line. What is that? So this is going to be 480 634 6169. Four eight zero. Yep. That's this area. Yep. Isn't that the one we just called? Um. Oh, it is. <laughs> well, we called well, again. Be on the phone on the main number. Yeah, that doesn't. I'll be prepared. To well, she's down. the receptionist, I'm sure, and so they get all their phone calls through there. I was thinking that. Let's try uh, it again. Hello, you've reached Courtney Simmons at Pivotal Tax Solutions. I'm either on the phone or away yeah, from my desk. Number. Please leave your name, number, and a detailed message, and I'll return your call as soon as possible. If you need immediate assistance, please call Shauna Smith at 480-615-3375, or call our main line at 480-634-6169. Thank you. Have a great day. Well, that's what we call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, I got the other one. Her name is Shauna. Yeah. Four eight zero six one five three three seven five. Seven one one seven. Seven one one seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was also emailing Ashley Swavel about these. She has a direct line if we want to try that, but she did not say. She said call our main line, which is the one we called it first. So okay. I don't have Wayne Tenenbaum. He's usually who I 
talk to on these things. Let's try. And I don't have Ashley this number. here. scheduling something if they're not going to See if they can reschedule these properties. Secretary of the board to reschedule the properties, you said? Yeah, I mean, they don't have to, they just have that opportunity. Of course, if they don't, they'll all be denied. Okay. I can't, I can't imagine why neither one of them were there when they filed this appeal. Yeah, I know Jay, um, he recently just had a kid, so that is why he's out. Um, Brady should be here at some point today, so I will make sure that he's aware of this. Um, and you said you're the chairman of what department again? Of the Oklahoma County Board of Equalization. Oklahoma County Board of Equalization. 
hospitalization. Yeah, we'll even I'll even talk to the Jenny Dobson's kid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you, Patrick, for calling, and I have this message, so I will get it to them, um, okay. and hopefully you'll heal back, hear back from them as soon as possible. All right, thank you. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you just say it two people, right? Um, yeah, no, Brett Brady and, and Jay Dobson were the only ones for that, and then, yeah, only two, two uh, taxpayers for the whole thing. I, I have an email conversation with Brady on June 13th, on June 13th, about this meeting where he's even saying, just to confirm, 10 a.m. for both dates, correct? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, I knew Jay had a new baby, but I don't know what's on this one. Okay. Um, and, and, we, and we sent that out to them. Okay. Uh, we can try the main line again, or we can also try that other that other number that the second lady referred us to. I mean, yeah, this, uh, we'll give them one more shot. Okay, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna try that number that that second lady that Sean referred us to. And we'll just see if we can get a hold of anybody here. Has been forwarded to an automated book. Okay, man line. Last shot. Because this is the one they said to call. I want to make sure 100% I'm typing it exactly right. 4834 right there, not there. Yeah. Right here with it. Might, go to, might go to Google and Google uh, people tax. See if they have anything. 480. Perfect. The best number to call us. Excellent. Wait. Okay, I just got a call from my coworker. She said I have someone on the phone saying she was supposed to call in for her meeting this morning. Well, no, we're supposed to call you. What's her number? That says six. Is that about Arizona? Yep. But yeah, let's see. Ashley gave us four eight zero six three four six one six nine. All right, let me, let me let her respond with her number. So somebody called in from the six one six nine number. Um, not sure. I just got a text from my coworker saying someone's on the phone saying she needs to call in for her meeting. So I'm um, finding out what her number is so we can give her a call. There's two glide balls in there. Number. Hey Peggy, um, does uh, that lady have a number? Because we can call her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's five six one six seven zero six four six one. And then, did she give you a name? Okay, that name doesn't sound familiar to me, but okay, we'll give her a call. Is, wait, did she say she's with Pivotal Tax? Okay, all right, we'll give her a call. All right, thank you. Bye. What's Hannah's number? Uh, it is 561-670-6461. And I have never heard that name. Before. What's her last name? Uh, Evelf, E-V-E-L-T-H. 561-670-6461. Hello? 
Hello. Hannah? Yes, this is she. All right, this is Patrick Crawley, Chairman of the Board of Equalization. Uh, Hi, Patrick. <laughs> hey, when, were you the one that filed this appeal or is supposed to talk to us about it? Yes, I am the representative today. Okay. Uh, and just for future reference, we, we had a whole list, litany of phone numbers we were calling that were getting email things. So luckily, you called in. Uh, otherwise, it's, we were going to dispose of these without you. But very excited about that. All right, that's you. Like I said, just for future reference. All right, the first property we have in front of us is our number B O E one seventy five. That's a count number ending in zero zero one six. It's the property at 1432 Northeast 7th Street. It's the historic Dunbar School Apartments. The, uh, looks like the assessor has assessed this at 106670000 Is that no, right? No. Oh, I'm sorry, 106670000 Or $670. And no, one, in 175, it just took a two million. Say what? Uh, All right. Are we doing 175 or 176? We're doing 175. Okay. Uh, and are they, are you're you're asking sixty thousand. Do you have that property in front of you, Hannah? I do. Yes. And, and just to be clear, we were looking at both of these parcels as one singular economic unit. Um, so I have the case prepared as one, one case here. So you're also you're at the one million six. Um, the requested value for both parcels is one million eight hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred and seventy-four dollars, and I'm looking at parcels. Two seven four zero zero two one six eight eight one two zero and two seven four zero zero two four four eight zero zero one six. Yeah. Well, first one we have is this zero zero one six. The parcels are, uh, and this is a kind of a technical thing, but the the appeal is for that particular piece of property, and it's not bundled with anything else. Uh, and we show that you're asking 60000 for this particular one, the account number of zero, ending in 0016. Okay. Uh, yes, I don't have the breakouts. I just have, I, I do apologize, I just have the total total value of both, both parcels for the requested. Okay. So you don't, you don't have any evidence you want to submit? For this particular property, you want to go to the other one? Well, I do. Um, I can try and allocate out the values really quickly for you, but I'm not sure it's going to be the same as what we have on the form. Well, <laughs> let's let's hope it's somewhere close to it. Let's see really quickly. What's the physical description of this uh, property that uh, BOE 175? What is what? What are we looking at? <coughs> Show the aerial again, please. Okay, Michael. It's that parking lot area right here in the vacant ground right here. It's, uh, seventeen thousand, about seventeen thousand four hundred square feet. It's vacant land, except for that parking area that's right there on the east end of it. Okay. It's associated with the parcel to the north of it, which is the uh, apartment. the apartment complex. Oh, okay. Yes. So this is this is a lot uh, of parking. 
<coughs> this is really just the parking. Mo some parking, it's mostly vacant land, but yeah. for, well, I was just going to say what we have it on for, but that's, uh, we'll wait for her. Okay, I have the weighted average based off of the total requested, if that would be easiest. Would you like me to read those values out? Yeah, sure. Okay, so for parcel ending in 0016, the uh, requested value would be $65,877. Okay. And then for parcel no, no, ending no, no, in... No, 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 no. Well, before we go to the next parcel, I need to hear okay. any evidence that you have or you want to offer that uh, supports your $65,877 versus the assessor's $106,670. Right, but what I'm saying is all we have today is an income and expense um, approach, and we have just taken the property operating income, and because the client does consider this to operate as a singular economic unit, um, we have derived a value based off of the income and expense data, and then we have done a weighted average value of those two parcels off of that. So I don't have any specific evidence for that parcel, it's just for both. Okay, uh, then uh, I'm going to close the hearing. No, on we'll, the, hear from wait, 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 we'll hear from the assessor first. He, he gets okay. a shot at it. Uh, okay. Just, uh, just to uh, clarify, that we're talking about 17,400 square feet of land <clears throat> currently on at uh, $3 a square foot. Okay. And I don't even know, do we have any... Uh, Special features. Yeah, go, yeah, or there, go to evaluations, please, Michael. Okay. And we're, we've got uh, uh, the property pulled up on, on a uh, big screen oh, here. Yeah. We're okay. Looking, we're looking at yeah. it right now. Click the old right value in there. there. I think Thank you. No, oh, 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 right tab. Oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, we Let's just. See. Thank you. <laughs> So we do have land value, and it looks like it doesn't look like pretty equal. Yeah, I don't even know why it's that, but anyway, yeah, still equals out to basically three bucks a square foot overall, I think. Yeah, so basically, it's it's mostly vacant land with a small area of parking on on the east end of it, but it is part of the of the uh, main complex or part of a complex that's yeah you know, the parking is for the tenants yes oh. apparently yes look at that area we'll get right. this. yeah now that's and it's three dollars a square foot for that seventeen thousand four hundred square feet yes that's what it looks like it's on for yes mm -hmm. did you allocate a value for the pavement it doesn't look well i mean it doesn't look like it Wait a minute. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, okay, valuation. there it is. It is. Okay, three dollars a foot is fifty two thousand. So it looks like it looks like an odd allocation, honestly. It looks like it should have a yard item in there. It looks like it's over uh, uh, the paving doesn't look, look right on that. Do you have special features, Michael? And then you go over uh, the 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 appreciated value of that blacktop on the cost approach is $53,821. And that blacktop parking lot's new. It was built in 2019. Okay. And the value of it? Of that, $53,821 for 18,079 square feet of yard paving blacktop. No, sir, I do not. Okay. And did you, uh, did you hear that? They've uh, allocated or assessed the paving part only at $53,821. The rest of it is uh, the vacant land, the cost of the land at that particular <coughs> location. Okay. All right? Thank you. Okay, got it. All right. Is there anything else that you want to add for this particular piece of property? No, sir. 
Okay. Now I'll close, unless the board has any comment or questions. I'm going to close the uh, hearing on BOE 175, and I'll open up the hearing on BOE 176, which is account number ending in 8120. Looks like the assessor initially had this property at 2860000 and uh, at the informal uh, the assessor came down to two million seven hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred and thirty dollars. Looks like the taxpayer is asking for one point six million for this uh, particular lot or property itself. Count number eight one two. That's not yeah. right. Okay, all those numbers right? No. No. Um, we had adjusted based off of the weighted average, um, so we would be requesting a value of one million seven hundred and sixty-six thousand two hundred and ninety-six dollars. One million seven hundred and what? One million seven hundred and sixty-six thousand two hundred and ninety-six. Okay. So we're about uh, what is that? Fourteen thousand difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, tell us what you want us to know about this particular. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so this subject here is the historic Dunbar School Apartments. Um, it was originally constructed in 1920. Um, the building square feet is around sixty thousand. Um, and the total areas of both parcels, so and I won't read that out because that's going to be confusing because we are considering this appeal as one economic unit. Um, the subject does include 52 units of Section 42 senior living uh, apartments. So this is a low income apartment complex. Um, so what we have done is we have provided the actual um, income and expense data, um, and we have included both the year-end 2022 and year-end 2021 income and expense data for review. Um, and basically, um, I'm not sure, do you have any information from us or no? Yeah, well, we had everything that was presented at the uh, informal, but uh, okay. Just to make sure we all got our numbers right, what's the income and expense for 2022? So, would that be the net operating income? <coughs> okay. You're asking? Yes. That, that net operating income for 2022 that I'm looking at right now is $128,252. Does that match up? Uh, yes. That match up, everybody? Okay. All right, okay. so that matched up. Now, what was it for 21? Um, $164,669. Okay. Did you have to drop an occupancy? Um, I don't have the occupancy here in front of me, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so I'm unfortunately unable to, I do not have a rent roll, um, so I'm unable to answer that, unfortunately. Um, but basically we have um, utilized an effective cap rate unloaded of 7%, um, and that is, we, the CoStar market support indicates that Northeast Oklahoma City um, cap rates at 7.02 for um, Q1 of 2023, um, and as well as Q4 2022. That's where we are deriving that information from. Um, and that year end 2022 NOI of 128,252, capped at the 7%, indicates that value of roughly 1.8 million. Um, and once again, we have allocated out the parking lot parcel um from that to indicate that um total requested value for the main improved parcel of one million seven hundred and sixty six thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars okay uh, would, 
the 164,669 versus the 128, is, it, are, are you, is that the value per unit? That's the net operating income. It's the income and expenses. Yeah, what, if, are these units all, uh, the rent on them different? Um, that I'm not sure, because I do not have the rent roll, unfortunately. Okay. It doesn't look like there was a dip in the net operating income. Looks like the expenses stayed relatively similar for the 2022 year from 2021, but the adjusted gross income did go down. It looks like the other income um, decreased, and so did the rental income slightly. Okay. I'm a little confused on how you make it. If you don't, if you don't have the rent roll, I guess you could. Your expenses can be stated for you. That's going to be maintenance, utilities, and all of that. Right. How do you get income if you don't okay. have the rent roll? Yes. Well, the client has the rent roll. They just didn't. I don't have oh, it. They didn't provide it to me. Okay. Yes, I'm just, a, I'm just a representative. So all we have to present to you today is the income and expense statement. That verbal does exist somewhere. I just do not have a copy of it. Okay, so let, let me just say this. For future references, if you get, if you represent them next year for some stuff in front of us, your, your, your burden is to show why the assessor is incorrect. And you need to just have some sense of pride in what you're able to argue with us and get on your client to give you sufficient information because you can't even answer my question well we did provide the income and expense statement is that not sufficient well that's just a conclusion actually uh and there's no supporting document uh, well, did you see page number six and I analysis that includes the actual income and expense operations after the actual income analysis? Okay, yeah, well, that, like I said, we have everything that was presented at the informal. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add right at this point? I do. No, I do not. Okay, well, we'll hear from the assessor and then we'll hear back you had on anything you want to uh, say okay thank you go ahead assessor okay so this year uh, they just gave us the sheet that says actual income analysis and that does not have any as you just said no supporting documentation I have no idea where they got these numbers there's nothing there's nothing they provided that it actually shows it came from the ownership of the property so I don't, I, I can't substantiate it. Uh, the other thing that I see right away just in that is that they included real estate taxes in their expenses and that's gotta, that's gotta come out. So that's, uh, that's an indication of something wrong right there as far as their uh, calculations go. I'm gonna go back to the 2021 because I did this hearing in 2021 and Dunbar Commons did at that point in time provide to us the income and expense information uh, an income statement at that point in time that detailed their income and expenses. Uh, I don't know that I actually had a, a rent roll on the property. Uh, I do know that she mentioned CoStar a second ago uh, and CoStar states that the property is about uh, a little over 5% vacant and for that's you know fairly typical maybe actually a little bit high for senior Section 42 type housing. Uh, I did go to their website, says what they're leasing these things for, and actually they just they just give you know the floor plans, but they don't actually give the actual uh, rental rates on on them. So what I did is I looked at what I had from last year. I did kind of see if I could make any sense out of what it was they provided this year, and. I did allow, based on what I saw, uh, a little bit more off, and I, and I took it off this main account and just took the value from of the parking area that we had below there. But so there's still a slight, there is a slight reduction on this property uh, based on 
what I had last year from what I could tell, from what I could tell from what they had sent us. But I, again, I strongly disagree with the idea. And this is what we've had issues with before that's come before the board. People saying, well, this is the information we have, but they're not actually giving us information that we can double check because I have absolutely no idea that this is exactly what was on their uh, actual operating statements. What cap rate did you employ? <laughs> I use the 6.75 okay. and I, uh, 52 units, I'm coming up with an effective gross income of 435,000, uh, taking off 55% is what it added up to on the uh, expenses. Uh, so that gives me an NOI of 195, that's 6.75%. I was about $2,890,000 overall. And again, I backed off the uh, other parcel. And that's what I have. $2,782,330? Yes, sir. That's the area I, that's the amount I allocated out to this part of it. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. All right. Uh, Hannah, did you hear all that? I did, yes. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to uh, add to this? I think so. Yeah, I would just like to address the county's concerns regarding if the inclusion of real estate taxes in the expenses. We do that because we are only including an effective cap rate. We are not loading the cap rate with the effective tax rate. So at some point, the real estate expenses do need to be considered in an income and expense um, analysis whether that be in the total expense ratio or the cap rate. And, and here we were not loading the cap rate with a um, effective tax rate, so that's why we have to do it. May I answer that? Uh, the assessor has an answer to this. Would you like to hear that? Yeah, we are using a loaded cap rate of 6.75%. We are taking out the, uh, the real estate taxes but because we use a very low cap rate, uh, typically on the Section 42 complexes, that's where we're at. So yeah, I would, I'm would. i still using a, a loaded cap rate, it's just low because of these types of properties. So your cap rate is lower for affordable housing? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, why? Why, because whenever they, how much money did they get in tax credits to redo this property? I mean, they, you said yourself that they did a, a massive remodel on this thing in the, like 2019. What was it like? Five, six million dollars to redo this thing? Oh, I didn't say that. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, they did because it's a, it was an old school and they, uh, they got the tax credits to turn it into the senior Section 42 complex. And so they get a, a lot of money up front to redevelop these things. That's why they have such a, uh, a low income and expense to them, uh, or low income anyway, is because they have to charge such low rents. But the developer makes all their money up front, or most of their money up front with the redevelopment. Okay. All right. Uh, and you understand, Hannah, that without detailed information about the rent uh, income and expenses and all that just throwing it out there well this is the income and expenses is not persuasive so uh, in the future you need to have your client provide all that information okay okay i understand i'll make it up all right uh, anything else you want to add no that is it Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing on BOE number 176. And I think that's the last one that you have. Is that correct, Hannah? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate you here, your input and understand that you, know, you can only uh, offer whatever evidence that you're client provided so uh you know we're not jumping out you we just we understand your predicament okay 
Okay, thank you very much. I think we have a little time today. Wait, wait a minute. You're going to get a letter. We're going to, our decision day. Yeah, oh yeah. We get tomorrow. We're going to meet and decide all these properties, including this, and uh, a letter will go out to each individual owner or representative, and uh, we'll tell you what we decided. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Anna. Great. Bye. What do we got here? So uh, they have uh, showed up, and you're Brady, correct? Yeah, sorry if there was a miscommunication. We we got here about uh, 945, and we've just been sitting out here. Oh, uh, so, okay. And then my assistant texted me and said, hey, uh, we got a call saying that uh -huh. you aren't showing up. I was like, I'm, I'm here. Uh, yep, uh, yep, so two, yep, so 205, so that was on your meeting room notice, but the good news is you're here now, so um, we got here. Come, come on up here and uh, perfect. Have a seat. You're Brady. Uh, Brady Leopold. So we we're going to the nail. <laughs> That's what I got to say. I'm going to raise this just a little bit. She's just observing. Um, oh, she could sit up here. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to uh, yeah, observe a little closer. That's that's perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to call the uh, uh, BOE 173 as being the next item, which is item four on our agenda. That's account number ending in 2500. Uh, it's the property of 14200 North Penn. And it looks like the assessor initially had it at 10,012,778. And then reduced it at the informal to 8.6 million. Looks like the taxpayer is asking for four million eight hundred and fifty thousand. Is all that correct? That is correct. I, I would ask. Um, so the the property that you just spoke of is the the Dick Sporting Goods up there by uh, by Quail Springs Mall. Okay. Um, the other one, one one of the other ones. Oh no no no! We only do one at a time. No, I, I understand. I was requesting if we could do the other Dick Sporting Goods first. Um, just the way that um, that this one, in a, in a sense, hinges on your decision on the first one, and I was just going to request if we could do that. If not, that's, yeah, well, that's okay. you're not going to know what our decision is today. We will send the letter out tomorrow. Oh, okay, tomorrow. We, the board will meet okay. among ourselves, and we will decide. Uh, board decides, you know, what they think the market value of the particular property is. Right. So we can't really tell you today. Okay. Uh, Perfect. So some boards, they'll uh, tell me I'm right or wrong right there on the spot. So I didn't know. Uh, this, the, this is my first BOE hearing with Oklahoma County. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. That, the way it works here is we will hear from you first, the taxpayer or the taxpayer agent, and then uh, we will hear from the assessor. Then you'll have an opportunity to respond to what the assessor has. Perfect. That sounds good. good. And uh, just so you know, statutes require us to accept the assessor's value unless sufficient evidence, admissible evidence, is presented to overcome that presumption. Understood. Okay? Understood. All right. Uh, well, it's got to be okay because I said it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so we're on account number 2500. I understand you want to do the other one first, but let's, let's do it in order and because you're not going to get a, anything today. Uh, Perfect. All right. Uh, this one, uh, I show the assessor ultimately at 8.6 million and you're wanting, or your uh, client's wanting 4,850,000. Okay, that's right. This All right, let's hear from you now. All right, so um, this property, I'm, I'll pass this around. So first, when we did the the hold, in, hold it before you start passing things around. Whatever you got there, was that presented at the informal hearing? Yes, sir. Oh, then okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It around. Yeah. Um, so I'll just uh, yeah, just pass it down. So. 
really the 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 pin square, or I'm sorry, I keep saying pin square. Off of pin, the quail springs, um, the exported goods up there. We when we appealed this one uh, based <laughs> based in large part on a, on an equity comp basis. So looking at at other similar properties and um, you know that that Dix, if someone wanted to open up a Dick Sporting Goods, uh, another property that could be similar that would be able to you know have a Dick Sporting Goods operating there, or someone who wanted to operate a, uh, a sporting goods store, not necessarily Dick's, and said, okay, well, what are those properties being assessed at, and um, just kind of to, to keep equity and make sure that um, we're one one of these isn't an outlier. Uh, we'll compare it to that, and that's where this one stuck out to us. Is uh, this right now is currently being assessed at, let's see here, I believe about 142 a square foot, 142 dollars square foot. Now, based on the equity comps here, um, you'll see down there in the high, that green, or I'm sorry, the, the yellow highlighted 14200 North Penn. Based on these comps which is um, Hobby Lob two Hobby Lobbies, Academy, um, a, a general retail store, and then the Floor Trader, and then the, the Dick Sporting Goods down there in, in Cleveland County, and I understand that the assessor is not obviously um, valued in that one, but that's just to put a, another Dick Sporting Goods on there to, to give reference. Just to compare it off of that, if we were to, to average those out, it shows that the indicated value of, of this Dick Sporting Goods is um, a little over four million. Well, I acknowledge the fact that uh, this Dick Sporting Goods was built in 2012. It's in a good location there, up there, right across from Quail Springs Mall. Um, and so, you know, I to I, I'm not gonna I, I I didn't feel comfortable saying what the straight face. Well, this one would compared to this one, it should be assessed at four million. So that's why. We had asserted uh, 4.8 million on this property is to, you know, due to it being a little newer than most of these comps and um, obviously the location, which these others are, are in good location, but uh, that's a, I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you're familiar with that, that area up there. It's a nightmare. It's so busy up there off of a quilt, you know, by Quill Springs. So that's how we reached our, our 4.8 million. Um, that we have asserted was by looking at these and saying, well, we just want this to, to fall in line with the other similar properties. And so again, currently it's at $142 a square foot, which um, compared to these, these comps that come out to about $80 a square foot, um, that's where we were like, okay, something's, something's going on here. And, um, and that's where we are coming from with our value. May I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, I know you use some of these, you're talking about using uh, a retail comps that are close to, I mean, you don't have a retail comp that's probably within two miles of this location when there's dozens of other comps that are closer. There's like there's a new retail home value store or home goods store there. Um, so, yeah, I, I, so, I appreciate that, that, that comment and question. Um, what I try to do is if you look at the square footage, I tried to find one specifically within the same square footage. So we're looking at 60,596 for the, the subject property. And all of the, the comps that I've used are, are very similar in the, um, the square footage. And so that's what I was focus, focused on. The, uh, and as far as like the location, um, I, I tried to, to identify areas that are also uh, very busy locations, just like this this Quail Springs one, because it um, you know it is difficult sometimes to find a property that is identical uh, or, or you know substantially similar in square footage, and not only square footage but um, in general appearance, as far as not appearance but just the use of the property as you could if someone wanted to open up a sporting goods store like what Dix runs, they could go purchase this Dick Sporting Goods right here, or what are the other properties that they would also consider running a, uh, a sporting goods store in? And so that's how I determined those, uh, those comps there.
So that's why you didn't like use the academy on Northwest Highway, because it's not in a shopping center area. Correct. Busy intersection like the one is on um, up, up this one. I mean, I I, under, I understand, and I, I would say that you know Northwest Highway is um, you know a, a generally somewhat busy area, um, but I would say that uh, this area is is much busier and um, more commercial. Yeah. More commercial. Yeah, that's the busiest intersection in Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a nightmare. Well, it's good for retail though. It's a, it's amazing for for retail. It's not good when I'm. Needing to get downtown in 15 minutes. No, you're right. <laughs> Maybe I should time manage a little better. Or move in, in with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, at this point, that's all I have right now on, on this one. All right. We'll uh, hear from the assessor. Hi, Brady. My name is Jason, commercial appraiser. Okay. Uh, looking just for the the record, this form here that we got this this analysis was included on the second in the second packet for the dicks on the south side. It was not. I didn't see it in the first packet. I'm okay. sorry. I don't know if I so yeah. this we have both the dicks on here, but mm -hmm. it was included with the when the formal appeal of account mm -hmm. ending in one thousand and five. Yeah, just for it was not included in the packet for appeal twenty five hundred. Just for yeah efficiency. I mean, we could have broken these out into two separate things, but it, we were using the same exact comp. So for efficiency reasons, we just put it in one spreadsheet because um, when we were arguing these, especially at the informal stage, I know that uh, it ended up, I believe, two different um, deputy assessors. Is that the correct terminology? Yes, two uh, hearing officers. Yeah, hearing officers. So two different hearing officers ended up taking them. When we filed them, we were just like, well, we can just combine these and discuss them at the same time. So that's why we, we did that. Okay. So I was just bringing it. So okay, uh, on the speaking of this sheet, your comps here has any of them sold recently? I didn't look at the recent sales of these. This is strictly uh, based on assessed values. Do you know uh, lease rates on any of those that we have listed? These are strictly based on assessed values. Alrighty. Uh, the hearing officer stated, uh, this is the note about it. Emailed agent Jay Dobson asking for lease information that gives tenant the right to appeal. He replied with that information. I used what income information I found from the lease he sent and lowered the value to $142 a square foot. I mailed the notice of decision and income information to the agent on 5-10-23. In the lease, we should have The lease value is seventeen dollars a square foot in twenty twenty two. So the hearing officer did a generic pro forma income analysis using that seventeen dollars a square foot. It's a fifteen fifty square foot. Here is twenty twenty two during the fourth extension period. If any tenant shall pay, I have to look at the extension. But the hearing officer wrote what you said fifteen. 1550, yes. That was the, looks like here, is that during, is it in the first extension period? That is correct. She had it written here on 2019 was the first, or on the side. No, the, uh, the, the, um, this extension was executed on, um, let's see the date here, April 21st, 2022, and is the first lease extension. So pursuant to the original lease, the, uh, the value is um, fifteen dollars and fifty cents per square foot on the, the lease, the, the lease rate rather. Okay. Well, the hearing officer used the seventeen dollars, and she when she looked over this, so this is based off the seventeen dollars, and she had twenty twenty two by as this is the fourth extension period. But that was the base rent used in this pro this pro forma. She used five percent uh, vacancy collection loss and then a 20% um, expenses, which is pretty high if it's triple net lease, and a 9% cap rate. And that came to a value of $8,698,889. And then she just lowered it to uh, $8.6 million, so she just dropped it some even more. And that was there was no income and amount, income or anything provided. He just went off the lease. No sales comps, so that's how that 
Could I request, I don't know if you have the, um, uh, the calculation capabilities here on hand, but what that number would um, look like if the 1550 per, you know, $15.50. As opposed to the 17. As opposed to 17, what that figure would come out to. Um, yes, I'd have to log into remotely onto my computer to get to the income worksheets that we use. But, uh, I bet it doesn't drop to 48. I bet it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're right. Uh, I don't know a lot about math, but I'm not going to know that much. <laughs> okay. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just a lawyer. I don't, I don't do we'll go to the account okay. detail right there. I was an economics major in a past life, but that's uh, since behind me. One thing to notice too is this sold in 2012 for 12.1 million, and then again it was recently this year. You can see what it sold for: what? 12 million 331,000 five hundred dollars. Um, so the the sale price associated with these, the reason that on uh, most of these, like, as he had mentioned, is a triple net lease. Uh, the reason the sale price does not reflect the fair market value as defined in the Oklahoma statutes as far as what a willing buyer would pay to a willing seller for the, the fee simple. When we're looking at just the fee simple and or the sticks and the bricks of it, the sales, these sales here, they include, well, they include the value, the investment value of that lease. So they're purchasing the property, but they're also purchasing this secured financial instrument with being that lease. So they know when I purchase this, I'm when I when I value this building, I'm going to value it based on a discounted cash flow of this lease that was just signed in April, this lease extension that was signed in April of 2022. And so that is the least fee uh, value. So the, the 12.3 million in Oklahoma, if we were to value the, the least fee of the property, I would say, yeah, that is the value. And I'd tell the client, sorry, you don't have a case here. So um, what's the term on the lease? The term on the lease? The, the lease extension, this is going through January 30, 31 of 2028. So they're five-year terms generally. So, so what happens if time? a new Dix is built a mile or two away? Well, it's funny you mentioned that. I don't know if you saw the news Yeah. Yeah, on that. Um, I act, so I just saw that last week, and I haven't had um, a chance to talk with the client because I was like, I'm pretty sure they just extended the lease on this because I had read that they're doing that new... Uh, development of whatever they're doing, and that this one was at, gonna at the new development at where uh, it's right, it's right by it. It's um, Chisholm Creek. Yeah, in the Chisholm Creek area, and it's supposed to be some unique, like almost. Uh, I see, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's like two gravy. stories or it's something. Gravy, yes. No, we might be discussing that one here in a couple of years. I'm not sure, but. Uh, I'm curious to see what that's like. It's supposed to be some new concept, but I also read that, that this one was going to be shutting down, closing its doors because of that. And so I am curious, this doesn't necessarily, I mean, I would say it doesn't have much of an impact here, but I'm curious to know what they're going to do with it. Well, all we can deal with is the, is the current year. So. Right, that's what, I, I'm just, in my general curiosity, I don't know how it's going to work, but um, yeah, you're exactly right. It's a, it's a five-year lease. Um, I'm not sure what's what's going to happen with that, but my story for another day. Okay, thanks. Oh. Okay, did uh, are you asserting that the sale in April 22 was not an arm's length transaction? I'm I'm saying that the the sale, it so it depends one uh, how we define arm's length transaction because uh, that's kind of it can be gray, but two. Um, I'm saying that that reflects the least fee value of the property um, because there was just this brand new lease tied to the property when it sold. I mean, usually how these work out is um, I'm going to sell this or I will purchase this property as long as the, the tenant here signs this extension. And so that reflects the least fee, which is always higher than the fee simple. Um, and in Oklahoma, as for, for ad valorem tax purposes, we're charged with trying to determine what the, the um, the fee simple value of this property is the, the sticks and the bricks and um, so that's why I don't give you know if we were to have go have this um, professionally appraised this that sale would have um, little to, to no bearing on the fee simple value of the property so you're 
asserting that that sale at 12 plus million over there. If you go to the accountant for look at it. The, the, it sold in 12 28 of 2012 for 12.1 million and then again in March of this year for 12 million three hundred thirty one thousand five hundred dollars uh, yeah not March of this year mm, 22. of 22 no 2023 it sold this year yeah earlier yeah, right. this year yeah, tell me what 22 was well it sold in 2012 before that oh okay yeah it sold for 12.1 million in 2012 I got you what was the assessor's fair market value last year? It was eight million eight hundred thirty-nine thousand and two dollars. Okay. And a dis if I if I could to to draw the distinction between a sale where there is a new lease and a sale of just considering the fee simple or mostly just fee simple rather than lease fee is, um, I, I know we'll get to it next, but the other Dick Sporting Goods down off of I-40, it sold in 2019 for 4.9 million. Well, when that sold, that lease was up and was coming up to expire at the end of that year. And at the time that it sold, there was no agreement in place that we're gonna extend this lease. So that just shows the drastic difference between uh, what a willing buyer is, is or, oh, oh, yeah, a willing buyer is willing to pay whenever there is this guaranteed income on this lease, which would reflect the lease fee value, versus what they're willing to pay for just the fee simple interest in this property. Uh, well, we're, we're interested in the market value of property and what's compelling evidence on that is what did it sell for and when? Uh, this one last sold for 12 million and I guess your argument is, is that more than four million of it, I see you're at four million eight fifty. So you're saying that uh, there's eight million dollars in the in the value of the lease. Yeah, I mean, yeah the problem is of course not not your fault, but you're a lawyer, which we are too, but uh, sometimes we get into the weeds and we fail to see what the issue is. Because the issue here is not all that business about, you know, well, the fee simple, this, this sort of thing. It's what did it sell for? It, yeah, I, I, Who owns that property? It is a company um, of the of M MDC Coast is the entity. I'm not very familiar. This is one of the ones that Dix has decided to instead of um, owning outright, similar to the one on 540. They do the sale lease back, which is also um, investment value of that um, intangible investment value of that lease. And so that's again why the sale price is so high, is because this buyer knows okay, for the next five years, I'm getting um, this guaranteed income by a reputable company of, of dicks. Seller. I'm sorry? Seller, not buyer. The, the, the entity who purchases the property. Okay. Yeah, they, they know okay. they have this guaranteed income, which um, again reflects, that sale reflects the, the leased fee. Mm -hmm. Now, if this property were to sell without a lease tied mm -hmm. to it, that's where that other dicks that sold for 4.9 million, mm -hmm. it reflects that value. Um, and just, I mean, I, I won't talk everyone's one's ear off here, but uh, you know, even based on the, the assessor's own analysis, um, I would just be curious to know what it would come out to at $15.50 a square foot. And um, just using the assessor's- You would accept that? Yes. Well, I got just something to go here. One thing is it, so this is like, it was like a sale lease back. Per, that one with this recent well the the dick probably does that because they can write off their their mortgage right so the so sale lease back it's the it's kind of an interesting financing arrangement really is what it is so what they'll do you see them with with dicks walgreens and, and cds dollar general they do it with, with all of them what they'll do is is they'll approach an investor and say 
hey, investor, I will build this property and then um, sign a 5, 10, 15 year lease and then I will... With you. With, yeah, with you. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to build it. Say it costs them, theoretically, say $5 million to build. They go to the investor and say, well, I'll sign this 10 year lease and pay this much in rent. So the investor is going to do a discounted cash flow and determine, okay, um, with my, the profit I want to make and all this other stuff, I will pay um, you know, $9 million for this property. And so the benefit to Dix for that is that, okay, they built it, they spent $5 million to build this. They sell it for nine, so now they have $4 million in initial capital to do whatever, whether it be inventory or, or whatever they want to do. And that's usually the incentive to, to run these. How does this rent for a year or at least for a year? It leases for the, the $15.50 a square foot, which comes out to, um, it is $937,750 a year. Okay, that, uh, we're going to hear from the assessor if you're done that yeah. at this point. Real quick, there. just so they they're, they're so crunching some numbers real quick. Production yeah. row over here. He, well, he said he would accept it if they did the 15 year. That's why I was asking him, would he accept the value of the 15 year? Which is going to be more than 48 and less than 86. And while they're doing this, this is the new dicks that's going to be. Yeah, that's what I saw. They had a lot of dirt work they had yeah. to do there. Oh really? I haven't even been up there. Stop the water. There was a there was there was a little lake looking thing. Okay, it's we'll hear from the assessor. Wow. The oh, okay. I uh, crunched the numbers at fifteen fifty and the bottom line was seven million nine hundred thirty one thousand four hundred dollars. Seven million nine hundred thirty one thousand four hundred. Four hundred. Okay. So, yeah. Is that a new offer that you're making, or? Well, that's just he re wonders oh, what it was at at fifteen fifty instead of seventeen for the um, price per square foot. And it, I, I assume that that's keeping the other numbers that were in there. Yes, well. five percent okay. vacancy, twenty percent expenses. Okay. Is that something the assessor is offering at this time? Yeah, or? are you offering that or are we at 8.6 million? He just doing what the guy asked. He just said, he just said he crunched the numbers based on the rent that he asked. That's oh, all he did. did. Yeah. Okay. I suggest yes. he just answered the question. All right. Uh, right. Just yeah. asking the question. The question is $7,931,400 no. per square foot. But would you accept that if they did offer it? I would say that, I mean, I would present that to the client, what the client wanted to do with that moving forward. I, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't say with any confidence. It's, it's not on the table. So yeah. that, that's kind It'll of be decided tomorrow, so you, if you can't make a decision now, it's, you're not going to have a voice in that decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's your anything else? Nothing else. It's just uh, everyone knows that Dix, I think, is in a good spot right there, premier shopping area. Newer building. Nice. And you're still at 8.6 million, am I correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, it's Quill Springs Mall. Right now, loud. All right. Anything else you want to add? I have no comment in that there. Okay. All right. We're going. I'm going to close the hearing on BOE number 173. Open up the hearing on BOE 174, which is a count number ending in 1005. Uh, it's a property at 6601 Southwest 3rd Street, Oklahoma City. Uh, the owner is MDC Coast, which I presume was the same one as last. Um, yeah, the last one, they actually, um, that sale, that 12 point, it was sold to MDC Coast, so they now, I guess, own both of them. Again, I, I have no clue who MDC Coast is, so. All right. The uh, assessor had this uh, initially at $7,296,801, and it's uh, informal. 
at lowered it to six million two hundred and eight thousand eight fourteen and it appears the taxpayer is asking for four million even. Am I correct on all those numbers? Assessor? We have going back to um the county board of equalization form that was filled out uh yep four million dollars is the appealed value or the value that they would like okay. and you're you're at six million two hundred eight thousand eight fourteen yes six million two hundred eight thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars okay all right uh we'll hear from the taxpayers agent um, and I'll note that this, what I'm about to pass out, was presented at the informal hearing. Uh, I will, one, urge the handout that I, I already gave with the equity comps, and then uh, this is my income uh, valuation breakdown based on uh, the, the lease rate, the rate provided. In and this was presented at the yes, informal list document? Yes, sir. Okay. I believe so. Do you have a copy of it? Uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's, I emailed let's, it. Is it this one right down here? No, it's um, this. I um, emailed it to, was it April maybe? Before or after the informal? So on these, I we never had uh, an actual hearing. It was just email communication back and forth, and that was the informal portion, I guess. So it was a hearing that kind of went over the span of two or three days. Okay. That is not in this packet. I can, I, I have it in, in my email. I can provide uh, if the board would like that I. Well, here's the thing. If, if it was not presented or ultimately got in front of the assessor at the informal hearing, uh, well, it's not, it's evidence we cannot consider because it's, we're, this is an appeal. Right. And the appeal is limited to what was presented. Yeah, the appellate record. At, yeah, at the yep. uh, informal. You understand that. Yeah, I understand that. I, I was just noting that if, if the board would like me to show that, that I did send it, then I, I can do that. I was just noting that. Well, you're saying hey, you sent it before the informal hearing was three of the blue sea of the plane. Correct. Well, something may have gone wrong here. Then we'll if you don't mind, can I pull my phone out to check my email? Just to sure. Okay. Okay, that's that. We'll go back down. Okay. And then go back. That, that looks like this document here. Yes. We're in the document links right now on this uh, account in our system to verify what was. Okay. So you got it? No. Oh, it's did. not showing up yet, no. No, those, we got the equity comp analysis. Go back to that other, that other tab. Yeah, we, we got that one. And then go back. Is there anything else in there regarding? The lease, I think. The, the lease, the equity comps, and then the, uh, about, and then the letter. Yeah. Let's give the taxpayer a moment to see if he can provide that evidence and then... Um, who was the uh, hearing officer on this one? I get this one or the other one. This one was a uh, hearing officer. Her name was April. Okay. And uh, the note for it stated, um, 2023 commercial hearing adjusted back to last year's value. I spoke with tax rep Jay Dobson through email on 5-8. He stated he was going to call that day, but I never heard from him. He emailed me the lease info on 5-9 and tax rep Brady was going to contact me that day but never did. 5-10 emailed Brady to let him know I would be lowering the value to $6,208,814 with no response. Closed hearing and emailed NOD to Jay Dobson on 5-15. Uh, on 5-15 the hearing was closed? Yes. And when did the, you get this document? This document was in was in with the hearing when it was the hearing took place on uh, five fifteen. Oh, okay. So this was presented. It was included. Yes. Oh, okay. Let's move on. That's all we know. All right. Uh, but this this document was this 
uh, I think you had mentioned this document from the prior one with the comps, but this financial one was not included. What is, is that different than this? Yes. This is what we looked at before that had both of them. I got it. And then this was the one that just did the, the financials for this one, the breakdown that okay. he provided. But this one was not. That one, okay, well he does, he's not trying to get that one in anyway, is he? Uh, yeah, I was gonna, here, so here's the thing. Uh, this is the one that I, I, was, I'm look, I was looking for an email. I can't really figure things out on my phone. It's tough to, to access stuff on my phone. But um, I, it, I will take the assessor's word for it. And I'm not going to, since I can't show anything that I did send it, I'll just say that um, maybe this, what, you know, I forgot to attach this. Because I thought I had sent it when I submitted the lease. Um, which which was submitted. I, there is a you know I wouldn't put it past me to forget to put this. So if the if the board wants to uh, disregard this exhibit, then I can um, act accordingly. Yeah, argue accordingly. Well, it's just not. It, it's just absolutely not admissible. At Unless they don't care. Appeal. All it is is um, it's just the based on the. Um, the lease rate provided in here, our income valuation workup, which suffice it to say, we use the lease rate, uh, seven or a total uh, expense rate of uh, eighty percent, and then a, a a loaded cap rate of nine point three percent. When did you, did you use a different cap rate? There was no income, no income done on this one. Just comps. Um, no comps provided just this it just put on the last year's value because okay. there was just the, the note about the communication there wasn't much there was attempted communication and it didn't really this kind of communication failure it looks like so in 22 this was six million two hundred and eight uh, it was going to lower the value wait to what Six million two hundred eight thousand. Yep. In yeah. <coughs> twenty twenty two, six million two hundred eight thousand eight hundred fourteen. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, I would. I would just the only the thing I would add to this is that um, this is the property I had mentioned that sold for four point nine million. Granted, I will note. I don't want this to be misleading. That was in twenty nineteen. That was yeah. that was four years ago. Um, but this is the property that sold for 4.9 million and then in 2019. Um, and I will note that uh, on the income workup that I did, the income valuation, which essentially I think sounds very similar to um, what the assessor's office used, the 80% uh, um, expense ratio. Um, that did come out above my requested value of 4 million, that came out to 5.5 million. And so I, I would um, note that uh, I would say that the taxpayer, just going off of what was asked me earlier, the the, the taxpayer would be um, uh, okay for uh, would not move forward with any other would would not, would not have any issue with five point five million houses. Okay, that's what at the end of the day what we're talking about. Right. Uh, you're now altering your bottom line to 5.5 5 million. 5.5 5 million, which is uh, $110 a square foot. Okay. I have nothing else to add. Uh, we went over everything the, uh, that was provided. Okay. Uh, the 5.5 5 million is not, you're not going to be able to accept that, is that what you're saying? No. Okay. All right. Anything else? It's all got there. Have a no, nothing else here. Uh, okay. We'll close here. We're going to. Let's see. One seven. Oh, no. We got another piece of property. All right. We'll close hearing on BOE 174. We'll up the hearing on BOE 182. Account number ending in 3820. Looks like the assessor initially had it at fourteen million two thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars and then at the formal the assessor lowered it to thirteen million one hundred and seventy five thousand and the uh, taxpayer is at
six million. That is correct. All right. Assessor, do I have your numbers right? Uh, we lowered it to $13,175,000 yeah. after right. after reviewing the income and expense information that was provided. Okay. All right. Uh, tell us what you want us to know about this, Mr. Okay. So this property, is, it's, a, it's a unique situation. It's not... Um, it's not a, the same argument as what's made on the most properties here. So this property is currently in, in litigation, not from a tax standpoint, but from they had significant remodels done um, back in oh, 2018 or something like that. A significant remodel. Well, the contract, the contractor on that, and when I say contractor, I'm referring to general and subs. Um, they really mess things up on this, and there is uh, this is an excerpt. This was provided to to the assessor um, at the uh, informal. Um, this is an excerpt from the expert report that has been prepared in that litigation. And I'll, I'll wait for the board to, to get this. They messed up with the remodel. They, so they messed up, not just the, it was more than just a, a remodel. They went in and they uh, had to redo air conditioning, plumbing, everything. And what this expert report, which was prepared for the, the litigate, the pending litigation, and that is, if you wanted the case number, I have that. Um, this expert report was um, done for that litigation, outlining the, the extent of uh, damages or rather the extent of repairs that is needed on this property, and it totals $13 million. Um, this is an excerpt out of a thousand page report. Of course, I didn't feel like the board wanted 7,000 pages of a document. So this is just the summary on the second page here of, of all of the repairs that are needed. And this is done by HAG Construction, Consulting and Engineering. Um, and they had determined in their report that in order to get this property functioning to the level that it needs to be at, it needs $13 million in repairs. That's currently in litigation. So considering that, it is of our opinion that if you had a willing buyer coming to purchase this property on January 1, knowing that this is out there and that there is in litigation, there's $13 million in repairs that need to be done, uh, 3.4 million of which on the HVAC system, 1.6 on the plumbing, 2.4 uh, due to future loss of income because when this is going on, there will not be, they will not have tenants in property. It was of our opinion that uh, willing buyers is not gonna look at this and be willing to pay the typical market um, value of what this property otherwise would sell for if there were not these repairs that needed that that were needed. There's um, there is significant risk in purchasing this property as of January one. Um, a willing buyer would take that into consideration. And um, now the six million is roughly half of what our value came out to. And the the way I'll say that we reached that is in the cap rate. So in the a willing buyer they you know, take their typical analysis and say, okay, we would otherwise be willing to pay $12 million for this property. But knowing that there's $13 million of repairs out there, I'm gonna have to reflect that somehow in my, my purchase, and that would most um, properly be done through adjusting the cap rate. So it was a simple just doubling the typical cap rate to reflect the significant risk in, in purchasing this property, which takes the you know 12 million, I think the assessor's at 13 million, so even um, you know taking the 13 million dollar figure and just when you double the cap rate, it's going to cut the value in half, and that's how we reach the 7.5 million, or I'm sorry, six, six million based on the assessor's 13 7.5. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, the presumption you're making there is that uh, you're going to lose the litigation with this. The presumption is that a willing buyer is going to have to, regardless, take the gamble. I got you. Okay. This is by the Home Depot. Uh, yes, right there off of, uh, I believe, um, Northwest Highway. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tiffany Inn. Yeah, it's a cool building. It really, it really is a, a retro Tiffany retro apartment. It's it's really a cool building. So how? What's the current occupancy right? The current occupancy is. Let's see. Um, current occupancy is at. I don't, so I just brought the, the income analysis I broke up, or I, I worked up. I had sent, I believe we sent that information. Um, it was 93%. Okay, that's right. At the first of the year. I'm sorry. With all those necessary repairs? So the, the issue with these is that right now, they're able to get by. Uh, the issue is that the way that these things were installed is they are not going to last and so the air conditioner um, from what was related to me uh, when I say air conditioner I mean what I don't even know if you call it an air conditioner at that point but it's running essentially at maximum capacity all the time and the plumbing um, is having similar issues and it is just the capacity of it being maximized and they started to quickly the elevator they started having issues with the elevators kind of triggered them to get stuff checked out, they had some count come out and they're like, whoa, this stuff was not done correctly. So they first said, okay, well, we're gonna call the contractors and say, hey, you need to come out and fix this stuff. Well, it was of the contractor's opinion that this, they said, we can't fix this. A lot of this just has to be replaced. And so that was also confirmed in the expert report is that, yeah, this stuff has to be replaced. Um, or you know within uh, I don't know what the, the years was but in, in the immediate future insofar as uh, it necessitated the immediate litigation litigation hasn't been complete yet so that's something we don't know it was yeah it was filed in 2020 so it's going on three really? years yeah so there's um I don't have the, a copy of the caption there I believe are over 20 named defendants due to all the subcontractors so it's just it's a mess, is what it is, um, and the the current owner uh, has. I mean, I, I feel I can relate this. Has said, you know, if this doesn't go the way that, you know, essentially, if, if they lose, they don't know what they're going to do because there's 13 million dollars, which is um, otherwise essentially the value of the property. Uh, well. Even if they're successful, uh, they'd, they'd have to get that amount of money out of those right. and contractors, I, and that's uh, really yeah. Easy. No. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll hear from the assessor. Yes, this property was an old building that was in uh, a lot of disrepair up until 2017, 2018, when they did the remodel and they completely redid it. As I understand, the problem is with the heating and air conditioning system that's built up with a geothermal system. I'm not familiar with how well it works or anything, but apparently they have some serious issues. Uh, but all we had to do as of January 1 was what it was, and that was taking the income expense information that was provided by the attorneys, and that's how we worked up our value. And uh, like I said, it was 93% occupied. We had all of the income expense information running as a typical uh, complex. Uh, their argument about you know willing buyer, willing seller, I don't believe is, is the argument that we can make here. Because if you look at the definition of market value, it says the most probable price which property should bring in competitive and open market, et cetera, et cetera but it says that assuming the price is not affected by undue stimulus. Well, 
This is this is undue stimulus. It's not going to be a willing buyer, willing seller at that point in time. It's conjecture at this point as far as what we're talking about. What we do know is how it was operating as of January 1. If the case goes and they end up going through there and saying, okay, we're going to start working on this thing, we're going to have to uh, shut down floors to get it done, by all means, we'll start talking about that point in time uh, adjusting values for loss of income and loss of utility. But as of January 1 of this year, it was an, up, it was an operating property. You had 93% occupancy, you had people paying rent, you know, or doing your typical uh, expense and all that. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, neither do they. So, but January 1, that's where it was. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. 22 value. 22 value, 13875000 So we, we did drop down a little bit based on the uh, updated income and expense information. That's all I have. Uh, any response? Um, I, I, the only response I'd have is, um, you know, I, I can I can appreciate where the assessor's coming from because it's you know as of January one, well, it was at ninety three percent occupancy, and, and I understand and I, and I appreciate that. Um, I think out of that definition, something that is is not we don't have the ability to do here is to you can't in this situation because we know of these structural issues um, we can't assume that there wouldn't be any undue uh, I, I can't remember what the exact term was but any undue um, influence or anything on the sale but because we're valuing the property as it is on January 1 well as it is on January 1 was it had 13 million dollars worth of repairs. Now, whichever way this goes in court, as we mentioned, we, we don't know, but as the property was on January 1, it had $13 million worth of repairs that a willing buyer is going to consider. Um, in fact, there, there's just, there's not a scenario where someone would come across with this report and read it and say, yeah, I'm going to pay what um, I would pay uh, you know, I, I'm going to pay the full $13 million considering this report. It's just that, practically speaking, there's, um, I mean, anyone with just the, even the slightest bit of business acumen would, would, under, would realize that this property, I can't purchase this for $13 million. Well, on that, is the guy going to sell it for, thir for $6 million? As it would. Is he a willing seller at $6 million? If we're looking at a, a hypothetical, per the statute, a hypothetical willing buyer, willing seller, then yeah, you have the, the willing seller who is, so in this scenario, uh, and under the hypothetical willing buyer, willing seller, it's, okay, as of January 1, this property is for sale, We have the, the seller is selling it, and the buyer is buying it. What is the buyer going to pay? And again, it comes back to the buyer's going to see this and immediately say, well, I'm not paying 13 million, I know that. Now, what would the buyer that it, now it's a little subjective when it comes to the hypothetical buyer of their tolerance for risk so no one has just a, a complete tolerance for risk i mean everyone's going to factor something into it now what we said was it, it was of our opinion that someone would um do, just double the cap rate and say okay maybe typically i would have a um a six percent cap rate on this property maybe a seven percent cap rate whatever the case may be well, considering this and the fact that um, there's, a there's a real possibility I'm going to have to pay $13 million, or at the very least, I'm going to win, but then I'm going to have to collect $13 million in order to pay it. Um, considering that, I'm going to take my normal cap rate and I'm going to double it, and that's what I'll give you for this property. As of January 1, as it sat, sat with this, the structural um, repairs that were needed. And he gave the purchaser, you were asking seller, would the seller take? Yeah, yeah, and it goes back to the willing buyer, willing seller, but undue stimulus is the deal. I mean, when we have properties that sell from banks, you know, we don't consider those necessarily, uh, when you talk about foreclosure sale or whatever, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily talk about that being an arm's length transaction. Right. A sheriff's deed is a sale, but that doesn't make it an arm's length transaction. 
Right. What new, but in this scenario, it's still a, a market transaction. This, the difference between a foreclosure sale is that when in a foreclosure sale, there's not necessarily, and I would say commonly there isn't, um, it's not selling because for a lower price because there's structural issues. It's selling for a lower price because the bank's just trying to recoup what they can get. Now, this is different because we have tangible physical defects in the property that is impacting the value rather than some sort of external financial um, impact because someone couldn't pay a bill. Now, these are actual physical, tangible issues with the property. Quick cap rate. Are you buying this argument that you, you double your cap rate? That's just as much conjecture as anything else. Okay. I mean, uh, all I'm saying is, is that, again, when we go back and look at January 1, what the physical operation of the property is, regardless of what else is standing out there. So, you know, again, what we did on our cap rate was like 8.5%. And, and again, where it's located, how it was operating at that point in time, that's all that we can really go with. Is that it, everybody? Got their say in? All right. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to close the hearing on BO 182. That's the last one we have on the docket. Uh, thank you for your preparation. And, uh, gave us some things to think about. I appreciate the board of time. Thank you. You bet. All right. Uh, any comments for the board? Be good. I just want to make sure that the only ones, the ones that we've heard today are the only ones we have to rule on because the others. They, yeah, they, you know, they, 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 yeah, they will withdrew, the so yeah. Yeah, so even though they're on the, on the agenda, they withdrew, so don't need to do anything. Right. Right. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. And then they have, yeah, we'll send out a letter. Okay. We'll decide among ourselves what we think the value of this is. And, uh, uh, May agree or disagree with yeah. each other, you know, and just that it becomes a vote of, uh, in uh, mm -hmm. whoever has the most votes. There's only three of us, so it only takes two. To <laughs> yeah. Well, regardless, I, I appreciate you guys' time. I appreciate the assessor's office time and, and yeah. attention that you've given these appeals. Uh, all righty then. Nice to uh, see you most citizens. Uh, move that we adjourn. I check that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.